part two of Goosebumps, the horror at Camp Jelly Jam. I'm going to read chapters four through seven. Chapter four. The trailer jolted hard. I heard a cracking sound. It's going to break in half, I thought. I pressed both hands against the front and stared out the window. Dark trees flew past. A hard bump sent me sprawling to the floor. I heard Elliot calling my name. Wendy! 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 I shut my eyes and tensed every muscle and waited for the crash. Waited. Waited. Silence. I opened my eyes. It took me a few seconds to realize that we were no longer moving. I took a deep breath and climbed to my feet. Wendy? I heard Elliot's weak cry from the back of the trailer. My legs were trembling as I turned around. My whole body felt weird, as if we were still bouncing. E Elliot, are you okay? He had been thrown into one of the bottom bunks. Yeah, I guess, he replied. He lowered his feet to the floor and shook his head. I'm kind of dizzy. M me too, I confessed. What a ride. Better than Space Mountain, Elliot exclaimed. He climbed to his feet. Let's get out of this thing. We both started to the front of the at the door. It was up. It was an uphill climb. The trailer tilted up. I reached the door first. I grabbed the handle. A loud knock on the door made me jump back. Hey! I cried. Three more knocks. It's mom and dad. Elliot cried. They found us. Open it. Hurry up. He didn't have to tell me to hurry. My heart skipped. I was so glad to see them. I turned the handle, pushed open the trailer door, and gasped. Mm. Chapter 5 I stared at the face of a blonde-haired man. His blue eyes sparkled in the bright sunlight. He was dressed in all white. He wore a crisp white t-shirt tucked into baggy white shorts. A small round button pinned to his shirt read only the best in bold black letters. It's not this guy I thought it was. Uh, a hi. I finally managed to choke out. He flashed me a gleaming smile. He seemed to have about 2,000 teeth. Hey guys, everyone okay in there? He asked. His blue eyes sparkled even brighter. Yeah, we're okay, I told him. A little shaken up, but who are you? Elliot cried, poking his head out the door. The guys smiled and fade. My name is Buddy. I'm Wendy. He's Elliot. We thought you were our parents, I, I explained. I hopped down to the ground. Elliot followed me. Where are mom and dad, he asked, frowning. I haven't seen anyone, guy, but he told him. He studied the trailer. What happened here? You come unhitched? I nodded, brushing my dark hair out of my off my face. Yeah, on the steep hills, I guess. Dangerous, Buddy muttered. You must have been really scared. Not me, Elliot declared. What a kid. First he's shaking in terror and calling out my name over and over, and now he's Mr. Macho. I've never been so scared in all my life, I admitted. I took a few steps away from the trailer and searched the woods. The trees creaked and swayed in, in a light breeze. The sun beamed down brightly. I shielded my eyes with one hand as I peered around. No sign of Mom and Dad. I couldn't see the highway through the thick trees. I could see the tire tracks our trailer had made through the soft dirt. Somehow, we had shot through a clear path between the woods. The trailer had come to a rest at the foot of a sharp, sloping hill. Wow, we were lucky, I muttered. You're very lucky, Buddy declared cheerfully. He stepped up beside me, placed his hands on my shoulders, and turned me around. Check it out. Look where you guys landed. Gazing up the hill, I saw a wide clearing between the trees. And then I saw a huge red and white banner stretched high on two poles. I had to squint to read the words on the banner. Elliot read them aloud. King Jelly Jam Sports Camp. The camp is on the other side of the hill, but he told us, flashing us both a friendly smile. Come on, follow me. But, but, my brother sputtered, we have to find our parents. Hey, no problem, guy. You can wait for them at the camp, Buddy assured him. But how will they know where to find us? I protested. Should we leave a note? Buddy flashed me another dazzling smile. No, I'll take care of it, he told me. No problem. He stepped past the trailer and started up the hill. His white t-shirt and white shorts gleamed in the sunlight. I saw that his socks and high tops were sparkling white, too. That's his uniform. He must work at the camp, I decided. 
But he turned back. You guys coming? He mentioned with both hands. Come on, you're going to like it. Ellie and I hurried up to catch. Ellie and I hurried to catch up to him. My legs trembled as I ran. I could still feel the trailer floor bouncing and jolting beneath me. I wondered if I would ever feel normal again. We had made our way up the grassy hill. The red and white banner came into clearer, clearer view. King Jelly Jam Sports Camp. I read the words aloud. A funny purple cartoon character had been drawn beside the words on the banner. He looked like a blob of grape bubblegum. He had a big smile on his face. He wore a gold crown on his head. Who's that? I asked Buddy. Buddy glanced up at the banner. That's King Jelly Jam, he replied. He's our little mascot. Weird looking mascot for a sports camp, I declared, staring at the purple blobby king. Buddy didn't reply. Do you work at the camp? Elliot asked. Buddy nodded. It's a great place to work. I'm the head counselor, guys. So, welcome. But we can't go to your camp, I protested. We have to find our parents. We have to... Buddy put a hand on my shoulder and a hand on Elliot's shoulder. He guided us up the hill. You guys have had a close call. You might as well stay and have some fun. Enjoy the camp. Until I can hook up with your parents. As we neared the top of the hill, I heard voices. Kids' voices. Shouting and laughing. The clearing narrowed. Tall pine trees, birch trees, and maples clustered over the hill. What kind of sports camp is it? Elliot asked Buddy. We play all kinds of sports, Buddy replied, from ping pong to football, from croquet to soccer. We have swimming, we have tennis, we have archery, we have a marbles tournament. Sounds like a cool place, my brother declared, grinning at me. Only the best, Buddy said, slapping Elliot on the shoulder. I reached the top of the hill first and peered down the trees to the camp. It seemed to stretch for miles. I could see two long, white, two-story buildings on either side. Between them, I saw several playing fields, a baseball diamond, and long rows of tennis courts, and two enormous swimming pools. Those long white buildings are the dorms, Buddy explained. I think they're those. Uh. Ah, those long white buildings are the dorms, Buddy explained, pointing that's the girls' dorm, and that's the boys'. You guys can stay in them while you're here. Wow, it looks awesome, Buddy exclaimed. Two swimming pools. Olympic size, Buddy told him. We have diving competitions, too. Are you into diving? Only inside the trailer, I joked. Wendy is into swimming, Elliot told Buddy. I think there's a four-lap swim race this afternoon, Buddy told me. I'll check the schedule for you. The sun beamed on us as we followed the path down the hill. The back of my neck started to prickle. A cool swim sounded pretty good to me. Can anyone sign up for baseball, Elliot asked Buddy. I mean, do you have to be on a team or something? You can play any sport you want, Buddy told him. The only rule at King Jolly Jam Sports Camp is to try hard. Buddy tapped the button on his t-shirt. Only the best, he said. The breeze blew my hair back over my face. I knew I should have cut it before vacation. I've decided I'd have to find something to tie it back with as soon as I got into the dorm. A soccer match was underway on the nearest field. Whistles blew. Kids shouted. I saw a long row of archery targets at the far end of the soccer field. Buddy started jogging toward the field. Elliot stepped up beside me. Hey, we wanted to go to camp, right? He said, grinning. Well, we made it. Before I could reply, he trotted after Buddy. I brushed back my hair one more time, then followed. But I stopped when I saw a little girl poke her head out from behind a wide tree trunk. She appeared to be six or seven. She had bright red hair and face full of freckles. She wore a pale blue t-shirt pulled down over black tights. Hey, she called in a loud whisper. Hey. I turned toward her, startled. Don't come in, she called. Run away. Don't come in. And now we're on chapter six. Buddy turned back quickly. What's the problem, Wendy? He called. When I returned my eyes to the tree, the red-haired girl had vanished. I blinked a couple of si times. No trace of her. What was that girl doing out there, I wondered. Did she hide behind the tree just to scare people? Uh, no problem, I called the buddy. I followed Elliot and a counselor into the camp. I quickly forgot all about the girl as we made our way around the soccer field and passed a long row of fenced-in tennis courts. The thwack of tennis balls followed us as we turned 
on to the main path that led us over the camp. So many sports, so much activity. We pushed our way through kids of all ages, eagerly hurrying to the swimming pools, to the baseball diamond, to the bowling lanes. Awesome, Elliot kept repeating. Totally awesome. And for once, he was right. As we passed several other camp counselors, they were all young men and women dressed completely in white, all of them good-looking and smiling cheerfully. As we passed dozens of of little triangular signs showing the purple, blobby face of King Jelly Jam smiling from under his shiny gold crown. Under each face was the camp slogan, only the best. He's kind of cute, I decided. I realized I was starting to like everything about this amazing sports camp. I have to confess, I found myself secretly hoping that Mom and Dad wouldn't be able to find Elliot and me for at least a day or two. Isn't that terrible? I felt really guilty about it, but I couldn't help thinking it. The camp was just too exciting, especially after days of riding in the backseat of the car, staring out at cows. We dropped my brother off at the boys' dorm first. Another counselor, a tall, dark-haired guy named Scooter, greeted Elliot and took my brother off to find a dorm room. Then Buddy led me to the girls' dorm on the other side of the camp. We passed a gymnastics competition being held in an outdoor arena. Beyond that, one of the swimming pools was jammed with kids watching a diving contest off the high board. Buddy and I chatted as we walked. I told him about my school and about how my favorite sports are swimming and biking. We stopped at the white double door entrance to the dorm. Where are you from? I asked him. Buddy stared back at me. He had such a confused expression on his face. For a moment, I thought he didn't understand the question. Do you come from around here? I asked. He swallowed hard. He squinted his blue eyes. Weird, he finally he muttered finally. What's weird? I demanded. I I don't remember, he stammered. I don't remember where I'm from. Is that weird or what? He raised his right hand to his mouth and nibbled his pointer finger. Hey, I forget stuff all the time, I told him, seeing how upset he was. I didn't get a chance to say anything else. A young woman counselor with very short, straight black hair and bright purple Lipstick lips came trotting to us. Hello, I'm Holly. Are you ready for some sports? I guess, I replied uncertainly. This is Wendy, but he told her, his expression still troubled. She needs a room. No problem, Holly declared cheerfully. Only the best. Only the best, Buddy repeated quietly. He flashed me a smile, but I could see he was still struggling to remember where his home was. Weird, huh? Holly led the way into the dorm. I followed her down a long, white, Tiled hall, several girls came running past on their way to different sports. They were all shouting and laughing excitedly. I peeked in some of the open rooms that we passed by them. Wow, I thought. This place is so modern and luxurious. It's not exactly your basic rustic summer camp. We don't stay in the rooms much at all, Holly told me. Everyone is always outdoors competing. She pushed open a white door and motioned for me to step in. Bright sunlight flooded the room from a wide window on the opposite wall. I saw two bright blue bunk beds against each wall, a sleek white dresser between them, two white leather armchairs. The walls were white. They were bare except for a small framed drawing of King Jelly Jam above the dresser. Nice room, I exclaimed, squinting against the bright sunlight. Holly smiled. Her bright purple lips made the rest of her features seem to disappear. Glad you like it, Wendy. You can take that bottom bunk over there, she pointed. She had purple fingernails that matched her lipstick. Do I have roommates? I asked. Holly nodded. You'll meet them soon. They'll get you started with some activities. I think they're playing soccer on the lower field. I'm not sure. She started out of the room but turned at the doorway. You'll like dear Dre. I think she's about your age. Thanks, I said, gazing around the room. Catch you later, Holly replied. She vanished into the hall. I stood in the center of the sunlit room, thinking hard. What am I supposed to do for clothes? I wondered, what about swimsuits and sweats? All I had were the denim short shorts and pink and blue striped t-shirt I was wearing. And why didn't Holly tell me where to go next? I asked myself. Why did she just leave me by myself in this empty room? I didn't have long to ask myself questions. I started to cross to the window when I heard voices, whispered voices outside the door. I turned to the door where my, where my roommates were turning. I listened to the excited buzz of whispers. Then I heard a girl loudly instruct the others, Come on, we've got her trapped in there. Let's get her.
chapter seven. I gasp and search frantically for a place to hide. No time. Three girls burst into the room, their eyes narrowed, their mouth twisted into menacing sneers. They formed a line and moved toward me quickly. Whoa, wait, I cried. I raised both hands as if to, as if to shield myself from their attack. The tall girl with streaky blonde hair was the first to laugh. The other two joined in. Gotcha, the blonde girl declared, tossing back her long hair triumphantly. I glared back at her, my mouth hanging open. Did you really think we were going to attack? One of the others asked. She was thin and wiry, with very short black hair cut into bangs. She wore gray sweats and a torn gray t-shirt. Well, I started. I could feel my face growing hot. Their little joke had really fooled me. I felt like a total jerk. Don't look at me, the third girl said, shaking her head. She had frizzy blonde hair tumbling out from beneath a blue and red Chicago Cubs cap. It was all dear Jared's idea. She pointed to the girl with streaky blonde hair. Don't feel bad, Deirdre told me, grinning. Her green eyes flashed. You're the third girl this week, the other two snickered. And did the others think you were attacking, I asked. Deirdre nodded, very pleased with herself. It's kind of a mean joke, she admitted, but it's funny. This time, I joined in laughter. I have a younger brother. I'm used to dumb jokes, I told Deirdre. She swept back her hair again, rummaged around the dresser top, found a hair scrunchie to hold it back. This is Jan and this is Ivy, she said, motioning to the other girls. Jan was the one with short black bangs. She slumped onto a lower bunk. I'm whipped, she sighed. What a workout. Look at me. I'm sweating like a pig. At her hair deodorant, Ivy cracked. Jan stuck out her tongue at Ivy in reply. Get changed. Deirdre instructed them. We've only got ten minutes. Ten minutes to what? Jan demanded, bending down and rubbing her calf muscles. Did you forget the four-lap race? Deirdre replied. Oh, wow, Jan cried, jumping up. I did forget. She hurried to the dresser. Where's my swimsuit? Ivy followed her. They began frantically sifting through the drawers. Deirdre turned to me. Do you want to enter the race? She asked. I, I don't have a swimsuit, I replied. She shrugged. No problem. I have about a dozen. She studied me. We're about the same size. I'm just a little taller. Well, I'd love to sw a swim, I told her. Maybe I'll just go to the pool and splash around for a while. Huh? Not compete? Deirdre cried. All three girls turned to me, stunned expression expressions on their faces. I'll do some sports later, I said. Right now, I just want to dive in and swim a little. You know, cool off. But you can't, cried Jan cried. She gaped at me as if I had suddenly grown a second head. No way, Ivy said, shaking her head. You have to compete. Deirdre added, you can't just swim. Only the best, Ivy recited. Right, only the best, Jan agreed. I felt totally confused. What do you mean, I demanded. Why do you keep saying that? Deirdre tossed me a blue swimsuit. Put it on. We're going to be late. But, but, I sputtered. The three girls hurried to get into their swimsuits. I saw that I had no choice. I went into the bathroom and started to change, but my questions repeated in my mind. I really wanted them answered. Why did I have to compete in the race? Why couldn't I just have a swim? And why did everyone keep repeating only the best? What did they mean? And chapter seven. Chapter eight in the next part.